this is joint work with a lot of people from Oxford, but unfortunately none of my four co-authors could be present, <laughs> so I, as the last author, had to give the talk. That's fine. Um, so, this talk is really very different from, from what I talked in the morning. It's, it's even a different form of generic programming. Uh, we're not going to see any generis, genericity on the structure. It's more like um, generic programming in the sense that you reduce duplication by representing things that appear to be different um, by representing them in the same way. Um, it's about sorting algorithms. Um, there is this kind of folklore knowledge that some algorithms uh, are actually more or less the same but just taken from different perspectives like insertion and selection sort. So let's have a look at insertion sort. It um, consumes a list of elements, uh, so you can write it as a fold. So starting with the empty list, we're going to insert one element into the already sorted list. How do we do that? Well, we take the, the sorted list and uh, we use the element that we have as like the, the PO and we um, break the remaining list into the elements that are lower than our y and greater than our y. Because the sort of list we can use span that just goes through the list linearly and stops whenever the predicate doesn't hold. And then we put the element that we have in the middle. So we inserted an element into an already sorted list. That's insertion sort. Selection sort, on the other hand, we define as a known fold of a select uh, Co-algebra. What does this co-algebra do? Given a list, it has to say, well, either we're done, and there's nothing, so it signals to stop the production, or it gives us how to go on, so it produces an element and an X seed for the uh, algorithm. So with the empty list, we're done, there's nothing to select. Uh, when the list is not empty, then what we do is we extract the minimum element from this list, call it x, and uh, we delete that element from the, list, from the rest of the list, and that's what we continue the algorithm with. Um, so they say these are two sides of the same implementation, or the, these are the same algorithm in, the, in their core, but you can't really see that clearly, or at least I can't see it from this definition. So what we've done is to um, um, to identify exactly how you can express these algorithms in the same way. So what is their core that you can re represent them in one, with one single algorithm. Um, and their core turns out to be a natural transformation and the theory around it um, of um, bi-algebras and distributive laws actually give us a, gives us a proof that these two algorithms are the same. Um, uh, something else that is nice about our development is that it's mostly type-driven. We, from the types of the algebras and co-algebras, the algorithms almost naturally follow. You don't have much freedom into how to implement these things. And because of duality, we're going to see often that we define one algorithm and get another one, which is different, um, more applicable in a different scenario, and it comes for free. Um, so we need some preliminaries. We use lists, um, which we see as base functors because we want to abstract from recursion and tie the fixed point um, individually. The, uh, we store some, some k elements in the list. It doesn't matter. You can think of them as integers. It's just something which, is, which has an order. So together with, the, together with these functorial lists comes a map. This is a functorial map, so it's not mapping anything over the, the k elements, it's just mapping over the recursive positions. And um, we can regain our normal list by taking the least fixed point of the structure with a fixed point operator. So the standard Haskell lists of k's are isomorphic to the fixed point of our lists. And we can define a fold that will work for any functor f that, given a algebra, takes the least fixed point and computes some result. Uh, dually, we also have unfolds. And unfolds operate on the greatest fixed point.
points. In Haskell, least and greatest fixed points coincide, but our development is a bit more general than that, and we don't really uh, require this to be the case. So also in our code, we keep this distinction there all the time. So we define another new type, this time a new, with different constructed names. Um, and we define our own forms to produce this greatest fixed points of concurrent structures F. Mu or new coincide in Haskell, but we don't rely on that. Um, we'll often need conversions between the two worlds, so to say that. Um, so we have a downcast function that goes from a greatest fixed point to a least fixed point. We can do this in Haskell because they coincide, but in general this is a lossy operation, so they can't do it. Um, the other direction, however, you can always do, because you can always embed uh, least fixed point to greatest fixed point. And now to get a bit of a, already a taste for what we'll be doing, let's see how, how can we define this function. So, we can see that it takes a mu, so it could be a fold. If it is to be a fold, then what will be the type of its algebra? Well, um, from the type of fold, we get that this will be the type of the algebra. And now we can realize that it's producing a new. Well, so maybe the algebra is itself an unfold. And in that case, we get then here a co-algebra whose type is this given by the definition of unfold. So this is just basically applying the definition. Um, but we can also think of, uh, of cast itself as an unfold, because after all, it is producing a new. If it is an unfold, then I'm already telling you that we can see the algebra, I mean its co-algebra, as a fold, because it's taking a uh, mu. And so the algebra of this fold has this type. So why are we doing this? If we unroll, if we expand actually the definitions of mu and mu once in these types, you see how they're starting to become, to look pretty similar, right? This is an f of g of something to a g of f of something, and exactly the same here. So this is already to hint a bit on how we're going to unify these things. If you look at folds of unfolds and unfolds of folds, the algebra or actually the transformation that we have inside, <coughs> they look very similar. And this is what we're going to explore. But anyway, back to podcast. We then have two ways of defining it. Either as a fold or an unfold. Okay, can you go back? Oh, so, so the reason that they look very similar, uh, if you view them as recursive equations. But the recursion you use is different. Invariant that these lists are sorted, so there's a semantic uh, 
difference. Other than that, it's exactly the same, and so that for naming, to keep the same name, we just underline the constructors and the title. Um, the functor instance is exactly the same, and these two types are <coughs> moving. The sorting function will then have this type. It goes from a unsorted list into a sorted list. Um, and we, we, yeah, we, we go from the least fixed point to a greatest fixed point. So, how can we define that's a person to the author? <laughs> right. Um, you could do it the other way around, you say, or... Well, it's not clear to me why sorting is to change any fixed point on the file. Because <laughs> it makes sense. This, this, this... <laughs> <laughs> not to me. <laughs> it's not going to be infinite suddenly, I hope. Yes, I, I hope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, it's not going to be infinite, I'm going to change that. But, so, if we, from, from, from this type, we can follow the development that, we, that we've just been doing um, of, of, compute, of uh, defining this function as fault and fault and fault and false. So, it's in a way all arbitrary because you can do this with the same thing in Haskell, but I think it kind of helps keep, keeping the thing separate. So yeah. we always take least fixed points of unsorted lists and great fixed points. This makes us even worse. You're saying we follow a type directed approach. I'm very much in favor of advocating type directed programming, but that means you have to come up with a type in the beginning. Yeah. If I'm going to think about implementing a sorting function, how can I possibly come up with the idea? that I, it should go from new list to new list rather than any other arbitrary selection. <laughs> I think also. perhaps it's something that you realize after you've done some development and then you look back and think, oh, but this makes more sense if I go from a new from yes. I, I, I can offer that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Obviously, sorting consumes a list and reduces a list. Yes. The data structure of lists that you consume is most naturally an initial data structure. So, so the type of map then should be from <laughs> the new units <laughs> because it, it consumes one list and produces another list? Indeed, and you can write that as a folder or as an unfold and you get inductively. So that's always the case then. Whenever I consume a list, it should always be new. Whenever I produce a list, it should always be new. If you have a rule like that, I can understand yeah, it. It's more complicated than... <laughs> But I can't message you. Okay. <laughs> how, how can you then compose the maps if one map produces a new, but then the second one takes a new? Okay, but I understand this rule. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, because it um, produces uh, a new, it's an unfold. And uh, so it's exactly the same development as we've done with upcast. The algebra itself is a fold. I mean, the co-algebra G is a fold of an algebra. So this is the type of the thing that we actually have to define. It takes a list. So this is a one-level list. So basically, you have one element, and then another, um, and then the rest is a sort of list. And you have to produce a sorted list, which on the inside has potentially unsorted. List. So how can we find such a function? If you have the unsorted empty list, you can easily produce the sorted empty list. The list with a single element, unsorted, just becomes the list with a single element, sorted. Now, most interesting case is when you have at least two elements. So, in case you have an X and a Y, then you have to compare these two. And if X is smaller than Y, then it's already in the right order. So you leave the x as it is, and you go on with the y and the rest. And otherwise, you flip them around. Um, so this is type directed because from the type, we fill out most of the cases, and only here there's really some choice and some potential for things to go wrong. Because of course, you could decide not to flip them or to do strange things. But still, even without thinking much, it, this is almost a natural <coughs> force to, to write. 
and this is bubble sort. So what it's doing is going through the list quadratically. So it starts with one element, and then for that first element, it flips all the other elements. The same for the second element, etc. Dually, we could have seen this sorted function, which we now call called G, as a fold because it's consuming a, uh, an initial uh, least bit form. Okay, then inside the F is going to be an unfold of some co algebra, and this is its type. How can we define a function of this type? Well, again, nil goes to nil, single element goes to single element, <laughs> and uh, in case you have two elements, it's again the same thing. You have to compare them, and if they're already in the right order, you leave them be, and if not, you flip them around. Um, and this is naive insertion sort. If we call it naive because in normal insertion sort, you insert an element into a sort of list, and whenever you find a position where it belongs, you stop traversing the list. The rest are already done. Unfortunately, here we don't stop traversing, so in this case, uh, we <coughs> go on because we say this is a font of an unsorted list. We're forced by the types. We, even though we start with a sorted list, the type of this function pretty much forces us to go on. That's just because we don't have a way to stop recursion in a fold and unfold. So we're going to fix that afterwards. Now, let's look at these two algorithms that we just defined side by side. They are very similar. The only thing that is different between them is these ins and outs, so the mediators of our least and greatest fixed points. <laughs> so let's just unify them in a single one. The key observation is to make this natural in what is the contained element here. Because we don't really depend on the fact that this is a fixed point of list here. We're never looking at anything more than two elements. So we can just go from list of list of x to list of list of x, flipping the sortedness around. And then we get a natural transformation that doesn't really depend on any ins and outs. We call it swap, because it's basically what it's doing, swapping two elements if they are not in the right order. Now, just copying this definition further up, from swap we can get both bubble sort and naive insertion sort um, simply by mapping the in or the out adequately and then doing the unfold and fold or the fold and fold. So swap is a natural transformation that is the evidence that insertion sort and bubble sort are actually the same algorithm and swap. This is the core of the of these two algorithms. Um, so, one thing that isn't satisfactory, of course, is that we have naive insertion sort and not true insertion sort because we don't stop the recursion when we've done, when we insert an element in sort of this. So, how can we write a true insertion sort? For that, we need to move to more advanced recursive morphisms, namely paramorphisms, as a variant on catamorphisms. And for them, we first need a, a pair type, which we just call pair and define and we call it times and we define it sets of left and right and a fan out operator that takes two functions that go to distinct types and merges them into a function that goes to a pair of types. And with this we can then define the paramorphism um, that is well looks pretty much like a catamorphism, the form that we had before. But the important difference that now in the algebra we have access not only to the A but also to the so to say the result so far, what's been computed so far. Dually, we need sums and a fan in operator that takes functions, two separate functions that go into type C and merges them into a single function that goes from a choice between the two types into C. And then we can define the apomorphism. The apomorphism is a variant on the unfold that um, whose important difference is that in the co-algebra it can decide to either produce an A or just say stop and use this as the final result. So that's why we label the constructors of our sum 
either stop A, which means stop with this thing, or go on with B, with this thing. So again, if we use a type-directed approach, we can compute the types of the expected uh, algebras and co-algebras. You might wonder why we do folds of apples and then folds of paras, and not, say, paras of apples or paras of uh, cactus and then paras of anus. It just turns out that these are the ones that actually give us what we want. These are the ones that come down to a type that we can merge. The others just don't work. There's a good explanation in the paper for this, but I don't have time to go into that now. Um, so if you look at these, the expanded types of the algebras, they're again something that we can unify, because this one is an f of a g with a product, so this one is more general than this one, and the, and the, the result, this one, is more general than this one. So we're going to be able to unify them. Um, now back to insertion and selection. So, now we're going to write insertion sort as a fold of an anthropomorphism. So the co-algebra thing of the anthropomorphism has this type. How can it be defined? Again, not much choice. Empty list goes to empty lists. If you have a single element and, well, nothing more, then you just keep the single element and you stop. If you have two elements, an A and a B, now it's the interesting case, because if the A is lower than B, then you know that you can stop. So you just produce an A, and you stop with the already sorted list that starts with a B and has a rest. Otherwise, you have to put the B on top and go on with the unsorted list starting with an A. Um, now I can show you a selection sort as a para of a fold, but no, let's just go straight to the natural transformation that we can get from the um, co-algebra that we've just seen. So again, we just generalize the type, make it natural on A, and uh, well, the definition is pretty much the same, only that now there are no ins and outs on the way. And using swap, which we call swap, swap and stop, um, we can get both insertion sort as a fold of an apple and selection sort as an unfold of a paramorphism. Both using swap, with the only difference that here we use it and there we use it. This one in particular came completely for free. We didn't have to look at the other algebra at all. I'm running out of time. So, in the rest of the paper, um, we move on to more efficient sorting algorithms because these are still quadratic. So, if you want uh, to, to move to linear rhythmic time, you have to use trees. So, we can define trees, we get counter instance for trees. We call them certain trees, so they always respect this property that the left uh, ele the elements on the left are lower than the elements on than the nodes and the elements at the root of this node. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to have time to, to go through this, I'm just going to skip through it. We, uh, for quick sort of us need, need to build a tree and then we consume this tree. Again, we can build a tree as a unfold of a fold, and for that we get natural transformation arising out of it. And from this natural transformation, we get also a co-algebra for free. Um, which turns out to be an efficient tree insertion function that stops the insertion when you, when you put the element at the right place. Um, so we have these two algorithms grow to, to grow uh, to, to, to make from to go from a list into a tree. This is the first part of quick sort. Then we need the second part, which is to go from this search tree back into now a sorted list. Again, we have two ways of doing it. Um, we start actually directly here with the uh, natural transformation from which two algorithms can be extracted for free again. And uh, so we have two ways of flattening the tree into a list, either as a fold of an apple or as an unfold of a parrot. And therefore we have
have two new sorting algorithms, quick sort and tree sort, either using flatten and grow or flatten prime and grow prime. In the paper, we also cover heap sort using um, a different type of, of trees. Uh, we also hint at merge sort, um, which uses yet another type of trees. And we show all the proofs behind this uh, development and why some things that appear to, to fall out of the sky here are just pretty much dictated by uh, the category theory behind it. And there's still some, uh, some work to be done. Um, in particular, when you start looking at the other sorting algorithms with heap sort and merge sort, these intermediate structures are basically what is changing and what is dictating what the sorting algorithm you, you get. So we want we plan on investigating yeah, exactly why this is the case or how this is the case and if we can potentially generalize more. Um, because now also we're only sorting lists. And that's yeah, a bit limited in a way because I don't think this is specific to this could potentially extract the kind of things like swapping operations and try to generalize from this into other structures. That's it. Thank you for your attention. same four elements come out as the right and the bottom. Um, it doesn't really matter. 
what comes out of the right. This is why this is only meant to give us kind of naive uh, insertion sort. We don't pay any attention to what the order of the things that come out of the right. But the thing that comes out of the bottom is, is definitely the smallest. The, 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 the row of these things, um, uh, W comes in at the left, and there's an X and a Y and Z comes in at the top. And provided that the X and the Y and Z are the <coughs> order, a sort of X is less than equal to Y is less than equal to Z, then the disordered cells arrange things so that the four things that come out at the bottom and the right are themselves in order. So this is the insertion. So if you then uh, look back at this, this circuit, you can, you can split it up in two ways. It's either um, uh, three columns side by side, and the, the left-hand column produces the minimum element, uh, and then some other stuff goes to the right, and then the next column produces the minimum element of those, and the stuff goes to the right, and, um, uh, and that's the, the bubble sort. Um, or you can see that it as a stack of rows, and each of the rows is doing an insert, and you get an, an insertion sort. So it was, it was impressed on me as a student that, uh, that bubble sort and insertion sort that are very strongly related to each other. In fact, the same uh, circuit layer, the same computation happens. And I think it's very nice that you get to see it coming out um, of the, uh, the structure of folds and unfolds in the paper. I, I really like that. Um, I did have some, some, uh, some kind of questions or concerns. So one of them, uh, uh, you, you, you carefully didn't do, talk about this in, 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 the, in the talk. Paper has bi algebras, so for, for insertion sort and double sort, you have these swap bi algebras, and there's a technical notion of uh, uh, there's a category of these algebras, and there are morphisms between these uh, algebras, and then there's an initial algebra in this category and a final uh, algebra in this category. And your your the, the main result you prove in this section is that um, the insertion sort, which is folded with the naive insert, is the same as uh, uh, bubble sort, which is unfolded with this, this bubble operator. Um, and you use the, uh, the initiality of finality to do that. There's, there's, a, there's an arrow in this dash line here um, from new list to new list to the underscore list, uh, which is the fold, and there's an arrow from there to there, which is the unfold, and there's a unique arrow, that's the thing you get from initiality. Those, therefore, those two things are equal. I don't think the paper says anything about uniqueness, so you Missing something there. But you, you, you show that these uh, that there, there are arrows from um, uh, this, the, the left hand column, the, um, uh, the, the, the in bubble of mulus uh, y algebra to any other. You don't show that there's a unique arrow to uh, the uniqueness, I think, is important. So I, I, I think there's still some work to do there. I'm not right asking your question yet. But here's a question. Um, uh, so there's this, this, this nice idea of, um, of taking the bodies of two functions that we've known, like naive insertion sort and bubble sort, and saying those bodies are, are, are very similar, and let's extract a natural transformation from that. Um, uh, so there's the, the, the bulk, which is the, um, uh, the, the thing to do with bubble sort, and there's the naive ins, which is the thing to do with insertion sort. And both of those are uh, not natural transformations, but they have a lot in common, and the thing that they have in common is a natural transformation that you can swap. And you can instantiate this natural transformation, and you can pre-compose it, post-compose it into simple functions. Uh, so that uh, swap with some little adapters is bond, and swap with some other little adapters is naive and so um, And then you talked about you, you derive one algorithm, and you get an algorithm for free. I wonder if you can say something about how that derivation works. Um, what, I, I see there are three functions here, and I see they're related. Um, I can write two equations that relate swap to bottom and swap to nine bits. Um, but I don't see how I derive anything from anything else. Mm. I don't think I have a formal process to say how you derive, but so here this is this is the, from the paper, and we're using a different notation there. I made the ins and outs explicit in my slides, whereas in the paper we use funny brackets 
either floor or ceiling brackets. Um, and that's the only thing that changes, right? Is the insertion of these ins and outs. Right. Um, and that's dictated by the type, mostly. So you know, you know what you have, and you know the type of what you want to get to. So then it's just a matter of putting front and brackets where they're necessary. So, um, because I didn't know about insertion sort, I only know about model sort. Yeah. Could I derive insertion sort from model sort? Well, let's say going through a swap. Yes, that's what I need to do. That's clearly the idea. So yeah. somehow I need to stare at model sort and come up with an actual transformation. Right. So, so the trick is to see that you don't you don't depend on the what's inside the sort of list of model sort. You only need two layers and nothing deeper than that. So actually, if you don't give a type to to bubble sort, it's going to be inferred to be the type of sort. I think. So in this, uh, in no, the still, still, still still angle. Right. So you need to kind of remove the, 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 the four right somehow. Yeah. So uh, um, the, the, the code isn't identical. No. Uh, but the yeah. So, well, okay. so you draw the hope that there's a type-based strategy for de deriving, deducing, uh, guessing the natural transformation. Um, well, it, I mean, it looks like the, the type-based transformation is erase all of your ins and outs, but has to infer what the type should be. Replace data type by a type variable. <coughs> Replacing? A data type by a type variable. That, that's the same. That's the, that's the type based yeah, because the type it is, then the is identical <laughs> modular things now. So if you just erase those, then it'll tell you, you know, how many levels deep you actually need, and then you'll just get some type variable for the other thing, and then that gives you what the the swap for the swap for whatever yeah. the other natural transformation. It works for this case, but not not the not other part of the upper one. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you so have to start inserting. That's just yeah. that's this nice trick, um, and then uh, you repeat it five times. <laughs> It seems to be crying out for a, a, a theorem rather than merely a trick. Um, is uh, here are six examples. I mean, usually we, we, we say, woohoo, we found two examples of a theorem. That makes a, that makes a paper. Um, here you've got six examples of something that, uh, that, that should give you enough leverage to work out what the general process is. Generic um, uh, yeah. yeah, so this is the actual genericity that it's missing from this paper, right? We do the genericity and unify these two things into one. But now you clearly see that we should also unify all these things into. Yeah, it's rather do it six times. Yeah. It should be a common scheme that you that you instantiate for six times. Yeah. So I, I, I don't see that. I think there's. Uh, no, no. Uh, that's a uh, plan for sure. Right. Next WGP. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you have any. I mean, you, you've seen the sort of network stuff before. Mm -hmm. um, is that only for. Insertion sort and bottom sort. Um, can you tell a sorting network story for apomorphism and comparability? Can you tell a sorting network story for tree based and Yeah, you probably have to start having sorting networks with tree like structures and other things. So, yeah. I wonder if there's, a, if there's a picture that looks like this for um, this one for uh, tree based sort as well. Two ways of staring at the same picture and giving you the same algorithm. None of this earlier because we, before you started, you had to find out. So. I was just wondering what the two sorting algorithms were that you got with each sort and the two with merge sort. 
Are they just yeah. variations on? With the heap sort one, we don't really know. We're there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my eyes are too weak. <laughs> we, we, we looked a bit around it. Then it, it starts to get a little tricky. I mean, certainly someone has done that at some point in the past. It, it, it looks like a small optimization of, a, of another one. So, but yeah, we couldn't <coughs> easily pinpoint which one that is. Yeah. And merge sort. And merge sort, I only know. So it's not sort of the two ways of doing merge sort or anything like that? No, there, there will be two different algorithms. So I was wondering, you, you said when you introduced this list underscore, mm -hmm. that that was something whose fixed point is the greater type of sorted lists. So in what sense? I mean, is it really just a, a renaming of the other one, or does it really have some property? Because how, how do you specify this property? It's just uh, we keep this in the comment. Yeah. yeah, to help us out in a way. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, just type-wise, it would be very difficult to to say that the integer is smaller than something of type A. Right, I mean the dependent type for, for that. No, no, not only, not even dependent type. I mean, it's completely polymorphic in the in the tail of the list. There is no tail. I mean, if I didn't yeah. mean, or it has one element and something yeah. more, right? Yeah. yeah. Or have to be polymorphic in something bound index. You can still do that. Yeah. Okay. All right, but, but here you just use it as, a, as another name of the same type. So right. it, it doesn't really have any. Properly. No. We, we assign some effort. But it's a different color. That helps. Any other questions? So returning to this problem of uh, mu and nu, uh, the, the different recursion operators. Uh, so from what I can tell, the, this uh, change of recursion operator arises from uh, usage of both fault and unfold in the same algorithm, right? right. So you, bo both of your algorithms are fault and unfold. Uh, do you think it's possible to implement a sorting algorithm with two faults, for example, and that would give us the same recursion operator on both si sides? Well, if it's possible, probably it is possible. But um, um, the way we do this this way, it's also because it just follows from the theory of uh, initial and final algebra, initial algebra and final algebra. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if that would be very useful to us in terms of reasoning. The nice thing about having both a, uh, an initial algebra and a final co algebra lying around in the type is that it gives you 
two two footholds on the sorting problem. If you only have if you only have initial algorithms, then there's, there's you know, fewer things you can do. But that would be like a stronger definition because you could right. like less, weaken less, it and get this this uh, signature. But that one would be stronger with the same uh, operator on both sides. It, it would be a tighter specification with fewer implementations. Yeah. So less, less, a fewer, fewer examples of better as well. How would you have time? Well, in a way, we are going to start a discussion around it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If you want to do this in 